Uh, okay, I'm going to introduce myself first. Uh, bonjour, and dinawe ma gana duck, ninga wabi guan edition kas, rainy first nations na dojiba, makwadorum scarborough ninda. Hello, all my relations. My spirit name is First Flower. I come from Rainy River First Nations. I'm their client and I live in Scarborough. Uh, what I'd like to share with you today is I'm a residential school survivor and I'd like to introduce Karen. And before Karen went to residential school, she felt safe. She was loved. She had hugs. She had her parents and siblings. She had her culture. She had her language. She lived off the land with her family and her mother took care of her. Mom tucked her in bed, played and she played with her siblings. She celebrated birthdays. She was fed and had healthy cooked meals. She slept with her siblings and she wasn't alone. She was really happy. So I'm going to go into uh, the next phase where I did go to residential school. I was at, at the age of six. I went to residential school and this is number 33. This is, this is Karen again, but she's called 33. My clothes were taken. My hair was cut. I was separated from my parents and my siblings. I wasn't allowed to speak to my siblings. I did not celebrate birthdays, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Valentine's, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day. I had no hugs, no encouragement. I was given a new name and it was 33. I had clothes, sheets, towels, socks, face cloth. Everything had my number on it. And there was no one there when I was sick. I was put to bed and no one to comfort me. I was given no meds when I went to bed. No one to tuck me in. I had no cuddles. I was forced to eat rotten food. I had no toys. We had a skipping rope, a bat, ball, and a glove, skates, and we were lucky if we could fit our skates and we only could play hopscotch. We had chores and our first chore as a six-year-old was to learn to make our bed. Saturdays, we had a cleaning duties and that was uh, usually the day that we were allowed to have a bath and change our, our clothes to a fresh pair that were identical to the ones we took off. Uh, we also learned the recital of um, the mass for the next day. So we witnessed many, many abuses. And me being second generation, my parents did not teach me the language. So I seen a lot of children come in that did not know one word of English. I watched them get beat. We're speaking their, their language. And it was uh, either with a ruler, a strap, pulling hair. And eventually, as they kept talking their language, they would put needles in their tongue. There was a lot of abuse, physical, emotional, spiritual, and sexual. A lot of them coming to have their pick at night. Another thing that uh, went on during residential school was I wasn't allowed to have a best friend. Um, 
I had gotten contact with his best friend later on in life, and I found out that uh, they separated everyone that had a best friend. So they took me from my family, and they took me from having a best friend. So I did not have any traditional food that I was so used to eating. I did not have any traditional teachings. And I was taught that my culture was lower class, that it was scum, that we were heathens, pagans, and I was shamed on a daily basis for being native. I was stripped of my self-identity, stripped of my self-esteem. I did not learn social skills. I did not know how to make decisions. Everything was decided for me. I did not have any life skills. My family was broken. I did not know my siblings, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents, and my parents. I had lost everything. I had lost my family bond. And I did nine years. So after, after I, I went up to grade eight, I was then, uh, then allowed to go home. But when I went home, I was so confused because I, I went home and I didn't know my, I wasn't close to my parents. And um, as I got older, uh, I started to, all, all these, uh, all this pain and trauma that I carried came out. And uh, as I made friends and uh, started to have a social life, I started to, I needed a, an escape to deal with life. So I used alcohol. And when I, when I drank, everything came out. I hated, I hated everyone, but mostly I hated myself. So I was so ashamed of being native. I, I, um, I just didn't care when I drank. And it scared me. It scared me because I just didn't care. And I seen uh, my, my mother drink and I didn't want to become like her. So I had a friend uh, in fact, a cousin, she just happened to to uh, come back from rehab. And when she came back, uh, I asked her, do you get to know who you are there? And she said, yes, you do. See, because I was always told I was the Indian problem. So I always thought the problem was me. So I wanted to find out what was wrong with me. So after uh, arguing with myself for uh, about a month, I just decided to go. I put, I put myself in treatment. And, um, and I had to admit I was an alcoholic. And I had trouble with that because I, I, was, uh, I, I didn't drink every weekend. The only when I did drink, though, I drank to get drunk. And I drank to uh, make my uh, problems disappear. So, so I, I went into treatment and in treatment, I found out that I had a living problem, that uh, my life was unmanageable because I had these problems. So I had to accept myself for who I was, you know, I was caring a native and, and it was really hard 
I could accept myself for being, you know, me, but for being Native, that, that was a different uh, step. So I learned about all the, all, uh, I learned about a higher power there and, and being in residential school, you know, and it was Catholic. To me, I, 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 I had, I knew who God was. So I had, I had accepted a higher power. So th that was easy. And I, um, I completed the program. But when I, when I got done the program, like I still stayed in the, the AA program for a while and I continued the meetings, but I went to counseling. I had a counselor. And as my healing journey grew, I started to learn about the Native history, which included residential school. I learned that we are not the Indian problem. I learned about who was the problem, and it wasn't us, it was them. I learned about them making it law. I didn't know that residential schools were law and that we had to go. And as I uh, continued my journey, I, I started to realize that we were, you know, we, we uh, looked at things differently, that we had a different perspective with uh, land, that it was, it didn't have a price tag, that it, we had, we shared it with people. And as we shared it, it got taken away. And as my journey continued, you know, I learned more and more about residential schools that I was, I, the school I went to wasn't the only school in Canada, that there was 139 and that, uh, you know, there was 150,000 of us that went and more or less all of us had the same abuse, some more than others, but it was, we were all taken from our families. We were all separated. We could all, you know, agree with that. So as the teachings went on, I really struggled with our culture. And, and um, I had a hard time learning, learning how to smudge. You know, I, I uh, worked in Native organizations, and uh, they never forced anything on me. They would start uh, Monday morning by smudging. Everybody would smudge before they start work. And on Fridays, they do the same. They close with a smudge. And they never ever forced me. And, you know, I, I wouldn't do it. I, ju I would just pass. But as time went on, and I started learning some of the teachings, I started to, to realize that, you know, it, it, it wasn't taboo like I was taught. So I started to, to start smudging. And then I learned about the medicines. I, I learned, uh, I, was, I started to learn bits of the language. Especially when I start going to the schools, I, uh, I became a partnership with uh, TDSB and I wanted to share that I did go to residential school and what, what was happening. So in order for me to introduce myself, I learned how to introduce myself first. So I was happy with that. Today, I find talking is healing. And I am learning about myself as I talk. To me, sharing my story is a safe place for me. And I also uh, got um, a question and answer period where I was put in a position of uh, sometimes they would ask a question that I couldn't answer or, so, or uh, a question would get me thinking about what happened in residential school. So, you know, this journey 
was is really something like it's it's been since 2006 since i started started to share and learning about all the losses you know the parents siblings language community i shared all that and as i i even as i was uh sharing this i took uh grief and trauma counseling because sharing it was so hard it was so hard for me to let it go after i shared it, it was so fresh so with grief and trauma i had to learn to put it back on the shelf after i was done with it you know it's it still in inside me but i i could put it away and still continue my life today i found that uh, going through grief and trauma that uh, living as an adult being a parent and having children uh, i was still uh, in a traumatic traumatic state that uh, you know i taught them to be uh, uh, prejudice against themselves i guess because i was i would tell them to clean up the the yard because they'd say these dirty old indians live here i teach them stuff like that and i didn't realize that what i was teaching them so i had to i had to learn all that and i had to grieve all of this i had to grieve the childhood that i didn't have i had to grieve the love that i didn't get I had to grieve the years that I lost. And I had to forgive myself for the way I treated myself and others. That was a biggie. If we don't grieve, we are disassociated. And we hang on to the, this grief for years. And I wanted to let go of it. We go into depression. We are disconnected from our emotions and relationships it's hard to work through this but it is rewarding without that grieving without that letting go the trauma stays with you seek resources and support there is a lot of places to go to today as i shared my experiences I still find new things I have to deal with today and I can face them. It becomes easier as, as your, your uh, journey continues. I am no longer ashamed of being native. I am a proud Anishinaabe Kwe. I am not the Indian problem. I'm still learning my culture. I gain my self-esteem. I educated myself on my on the true native history. Family is very important to me today. And today I want to be a voice for my people. Miigwech. And this is me today. <laughs> 